That's how big a deal your memories are. They are your primary programming for everything you do. Hey, hey think about it. You take away LeBron James's memories, he can't dribble a basketball as good as a 10 year old. Hey everybody, Dr. Josh Axe here. Welcome to the Dr. Axe Show. Today I have a guest with me that actually lives very close to me here in Nashville, Tennessee. It's Alex Lloyd, and Alex is a best-selling author of a lot of great books, including The Healing Code and Healing Codes, which is one of my favorite books out there. The Healing Code was an, was an amazing book uh, that um, I know that I read and I applied it and actually saw some changes in my health, which I thought was great. He has a new book out as well, which we're going to talk about, but we're going to talk about during this episode, uh, your memory. We're going to talk about how to heal using spiritual and mental techniques and lots of other things. But uh, I'm excited to have him here as a guest today. Uh, Alex, hey, welcome to the show. Thanks so much, Josh. I'm honored to be here. I've known you quite a while. I, I knew you when nobody had heard of Josh, and now everybody's heard of Josh. Yeah, uh, I know. I, I, uh, and and I, I was really fortunate early on to meet you and get some good advice. I know I've been out to your house in uh, Leaper's Fork. Maybe you have a Franklin address, actually. but uh, here in Tennessee. Uh, but we were introduced through Jordan Rubin and I know you've been a, fr a friend for years here and, uh, man, I'm excited to talk about, uh, re-engineering our brain and our memories today. And that's one of the things I always appreciate about, appreciate about you is you have such a unique perspective on healing. Cause a lot of times, you know, we focus on food and nutrition, which is so key to healing, but there are so many other areas that are critical to healing. And I would say Hey, if 50% of things are nutrition, or hey, maybe it's 40, maybe it's 30, but the other half of the equation to me is our spiritual and our mental state. So can you talk a little bit about the results you've seen with people and how important is our mental and spiritual health when it comes to healing conditions of all kinds from autoimmune disease to cancer and everything else? Yeah, yeah, I'll try to do that, Josh. It, it started with me uh, about your age. Um, I was uh, 20, 27 years old. Um, I'm thirty. I'm thirty eight now, but that's okay. I'm really? glad. Hey, if I look, hey, if I looked at uh, that young, that's that's great. So <laughs> good. Nice. No, you threw me off. 30. All right. Well, let's keep going. Sorry about that. that. Anyway, I was twenty seven, and uh, had just gotten married, looking at my life and so excited about it. And then all of a sudden, everything is horrible. And I mean, every day is like, just get through the day. And after visiting the third doctor, we found out that my wife was severely depressed, clinically depressed. And she was for the first 12 years of our marriage. And uh, we almost got divorced, but thank God we didn't got back together. We've been married 33 years now. But um, that started me down a path, uh, and that was to try to become an expert in depression, not as a career move, but to try to help my wife. Because I remember the, the doctor saying, you know, this is the big bad bear of depression. It's major general depression. She'll have it till the day she dies. There's nothing she can do about it but we can manage it with medications. That was supposed to be good news, Josh. Well, she tried that. I mean, she tried medication after medication, medication. Her, her symptoms were always worse than the benefit that she got. And about six years into that search, I read an ancient manuscript by a guy named Solomon who said, guard your heart above everything else for from it flows all the issues of life. And a lot of people consider him the wisest man that ever lived. And so I asked uh, three scholars in that language that he spoke, which was not English, what, what Solomon says here, would that include cancer? Would that include depression? Would that include acid reflux, which I had at the time? Would that include your career and job? Uh, all three of them came back independently and said, based on what he said, the way he said it, in the language he said it, Solomon is saying, any problem you can have comes from here. And so if you flip it upside down, the way to heal at the source is to fix it here. So 
I start, I, I took a, a turn in my search, Josh, to, okay, what in the world are the issues of the heart? And is there any way to fix them? And, and so that, that has what led me to kind of where I am now 30, 30 years later. Uh, but a few years later, I, I got a real gift. When uh, Southwestern University Medical School and Medical Center in Dallas, Texas, released a study that was headline news all over the world. It was reprinted here in Nashville the next day. And they have been trying to find what is the source of cancer? What is the source of diabetes? What is the source of ALS? Because if the doctor tells you you have those and then you say, well, how did I get it? My twin brother doesn't have it. The answer is we don't know. So they're trying to figure out where it's coming from and they found it. And that's the headline news. We finally found the source of all these health problems. And they said, we're naming it cellular memories, but just delete the word cellular. It's your memories. If you've got a memory with anger or unforgiveness or low self-worth, or I can't do it, or even though Josh's diet is perfect, it's not going to work for me or a whole bunch of other things like that. It, it puts you into internal stress mode and sabotages your results. So I started looking for a solution to that. Wow, I love that. I mean, what a powerful story. And looking, I mean, going back, looking at ancient wisdom uh, as the root, which of course I love, you know, I love ancient principles, whether it be Chinese medicine, Ayurveda, uh, Middle Eastern medicine, and some of what you're referring to, I think is so powerful. And again, th this is such a critical thing. I can just even tell you, I've worked with a lot of people with gut issues in the past, conditions like leaky gut. And what will cause an issue, just as much as if somebody goes out and eats gluten or dairy, which will wreck their stomach, emotional stress and worry will wreck their digestive system equally or more than eating the food they shouldn't have eaten. So again, I know that people, we can all see this in our lives on a regular basis, how stress affects us. And you're not saying just stress. This is stress that we've actually literally had programmed into us to where a lot of times people are reacting to things without even thinking about it, maybe because of past experience, maybe their dad uh, you know, had a really angry episode, so they learn to, when they do something wrong, to, to, to always uh, have these feelings of shame and guilt, which then drive disease deeper into the body. And so anyways, I know I'm taking some of your thunder here, but all that, all that being said, it really is so important. If you're a person out there and you have any health issue or you know somebody, and especially issues like, I wouldn't mind just, and, and I'm gonna, we're going to touch on a lot of things here, but cancer is such a, uh, a controversial subject and a controversial subject in terms of treatment, but so many people have it. I know my mom's had cancer, been diagnosed twice, and the second time she went and she did a lot of what you talked about. She worked on healing her emotions and her past memories. She focused on, she had a lot of worry and fear in her life and we worked on combating those and she really we focused on building up joy and hope in her we're really yeah. two of two of the emotions but can you talk a little bit about some of the diseases today like cancer and the others and then after that i want to ask you about memories specifically and how we reprogram these memories yeah absolutely um Dr. Bruce Lipton, who is a former uh, sailor biologist at Stanford University Medical School, uh, he describes what he discovered in the lab at Stanford as to how illness and disease happen. And uh, I'll give you the short version. Um, the Center for Disease Control has um, research on their website that says up to 90% of all illness and disease is directly related and attributable to stress. Dr. Lipton says, well, thanks CDC, but it's actually about 95% of all illness and disease. And so uh, someone in the crowd, I've, I've lectured with Dr. Lipton a couple times, and someone, so someone in the crowd yells out a great question, what about the 5%? you know, that's not, that's not stress. And Dr. Lipton says, great question. The 5% comes from someone in your ancestry 
who had a disease gene unmask and become active because of stress. And so if you eliminate the stress in the person who has it now, usually the problem gets better or even goes away. And that's what Southwestern found there. They were interviewing Dr. Eric Nessler in this um, article that came out a few years ago after the research study. Uh, Dr. Nessler is a medical doctor from Harvard who was uh, chair of the department at Southwestern. And Dr. Nessler said on the record, okay, this was reprinted all over the world. For most of our treatments today, they're little more than band-aids, addressing a disease or illness's symptoms, but not its source. And then he says, this new knowledge that everything comes from our memories is going to mean the difference between life and death, happiness and sadness, success and failure. Once we figure out, how to fix it. Well, Josh, I've not figured out how to fix it yet, but I believe I have. Wow. So let's talk about this a little bit. Memories. And and can you give me examples? I, I did touch on it a little bit, but can you give us an example of, you know, maybe a patient or somebody you've had in the past and they had certain memories, maybe specifically you can share those with us, and the results she saw as she started to reprogram her memories in mind. Yeah, I'll give you mine first. Okay, uh, great. When I was uh, adolescent in junior high school. I'll never forget it, Josh. It was a, it was a Saturday morning, about nine o'clock. The sun was shining. It was a spring day, and my dad had just found out that he had severe heart disease, which at that time was almost a death sentence. It wasn't anything like it is today. You were never the same again. And so he was grieving over, you know, at like 50 years old, his life as he knew it being over. And so at nine o'clock on Saturday morning, he asked me to help him in the garden. And I already had a tennis match scheduled, which was very normal for me. I went to college on a tennis scholarship. So it happened all the time. But on this morning, he snapped. And Josh, he had never done it before. And he never did it since, but at nine o'clock on that morning, he started hitting me, not with his fist, but with his open hand, over and over and over. And while he was hitting me, he said, Alex, you're never gonna amount to anything. Alex, you're never gonna amount to anything. Over and over. Wow. It, it probably lasted a minute and a half. It seemed like it was days. Uh, he knocked me on the ground, cut my leg, well, what's interesting, Josh, is that probably, I don't know, an hour after that, I quit thinking about it. And, and I honestly don't know if I thought about that consciously again for years. But on that day, my whole personality and attitude shifted. And that event ruled my life, Josh, for the next 15 years. Wow. And, and, and uh, looking back, my parents and siblings said, the thing we noticed is you used to always be so happy. You used to just spontaneously sing all the time. I mean, not just in the shower, everywhere, outside even. Our neighbors would comment on it. And they said, after that day, you never sang again. Mm. And, and, it, and so what my dad said, Alex, you're never going to amount to anything. I just started. I mean, my dad was my hero. If he says it's true, okay? Wow. And, uh, and one other one real quick, a, 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 a client I had who had by all measures a fabulous life, wealthy, great kids, healthy I mean, all of that, but she was in, internally, she was miserable, okay? And, um, and it went back to her parents who had instilled in her that she had to be, quote, perfect, which to her meant being a good girl. Well, her bar for being a good girl was perfect. 
I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't, oh, it's, off, it's okay to mess up every once in a while. You know, it, no, it was perfect. You need to never mess up. So here she is, this, this wonderful, kind, considerate, serving other people, successful woman that really anyone would look at and say, wow, she's got it all together. And inside, she was thinking about suicide. Wow. Now, she didn't do that. She said, I'm a too big of a chicken to ever do it, okay? But she was absolutely miserable. Six months later, Josh, she comes back into my office, married to the same guy, has the same children, same amount of money, same profession, same look, same clothes, and she's one of the happiest people you would ever see in your life. And Josh, exactly zero of her external circumstances had changed. The only thing that had changed were her internal memories and the beliefs that she had about herself and her life from those. And for years, that's what I've seen in person after person is, is it's not that you got to get a better job or make a lot of money or be as good looking as Josh or whatever. No, anybody can be ridiculously happy if you just believe the truth about yourself, which is in, which is coming from your memory programming. Wow, I mean, I love you know. There are so many people out there today that um, you know struggle with depression, struggle with anxiety, struggle with low self esteem. I think low self esteem is one of those issues, and listen, I'm sure at some point, I shouldn't even say this, but I'm going to, they probably are going to come up with a drug for low self-esteem here in the next 10 years. Watch. Okay. Remember I said it because- It's you called know, the, a sugar pill. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I mean, the number of people that struggle with low self-esteem is really huge, and the media doesn't do us any favors in terms of what they- say we, we should, we should, you know, the way we should look, the way we should think. So anyways, all that being said, you know, that's one of the things I love about this program too, is that it's a way to help you combat disease, but it's a way to build up your self-esteem. And also not just that it's transform your life. I mean, this is so critical for people in all places in life. If you believe about yourself, like, because listen, Alice, I was in the same situation or a similar situation when I was young I had a teacher, uh, her name was Miss, Mrs. Noble, and she told me that I wasn't smart. And I actually told her, hey, I wanna go and become a doctor or a physical therapist. And she, she said, she literally laughed and she said, you'll never do that with your GPA. And, um, and my GPA was terrible when I was in sixth grade, whatever I was. And, but that really stuck with me. And I literally thought for a long time, like, I'm not that, I, I'm not that smart. I literally, until, you know, years later, I had someone else reaffirming me, wow, you're, you're really, you know, you're really intelligent. And it was kind of like, oh, she's wrong. It's like I had a memory replacement, like I had a memory transplant. I don't right, know how else to put right, it. That's right. right. But um, I'd love to hear from you because again, I've experienced this so deeply in my life, both in, you know, my own health and professional success, my mom and her healing from cancer, all these different things. Talk to me a little bit about sort of how we engineer these people today that are listening to this and they've got a disease or they've got a negative complex. How, how do we, over, how do we overcome that? Yeah. First of all, you very well may not know you have it. You may just think that you don't feel great or you don't have much energy or, or something like that. Um, uh, depression and anxiety. Let's just take those two. Uh, if you take depression and, and anxiety together, and you should, because they usually go together, everyone who's depressed has anxiety. A high percentage of those who have anxiety also have some depression. You're talking one in two people, okay? When you include the people that would not qualify for a formal diagnosis, but they still have anxiety or depression that is holding them back in their lives. You're talking one in two people, okay. Of those one in two people, um, less than one out of three of them ever gets any help at all for the underlying thing causing that. Less than one in three. Of the one that does get help, 
based on statistics, less than 10% of those, once the help is done and finished, less than 10% say the help was, was any help. It, in other words, 90% say the help was not effective. The help didn't help me any, okay? So we've got an epidemic of anxiety and depression when taken together are the biggest issue on the planet. A few years ago, Dr. Irving Kirsch from Harvard Medical School comes out on 60 Minutes and says, Leslie, he's being interviewed by Leslie Stahl, Leslie, antidepressants don't work and suggests that we should start prescribing placebos because they work just as well without the side effects. Well, there's a reason these things don't work, and, and it's basically this. You, you, you don't brush your teeth with a lug wrench, okay? You don't change your tire with a toothbrush. You, you, we all know, okay, I gotta fix this thing on the doorknob, I need a screwdriver. Okay, Phillips or flat? Phillips, all right, okay. And with that, I can fix the doorknob. Yeah. But if I try to fix the doorknob, you know, with a water bottle or something, forget it and everybody's gonna be laughing at me, all right? It just won't work. Well, these memories are made of energy. They've cut out every part of the brain and the memories are still there. That's why Southwestern said we're naming them cellular memories because they're in cells all over the body not just in the brain. And let me give you some idea how absolutely life or death critical this is, even though nobody knows it. Scientific American recently came out with a, uh, a major story, very highly regarded journal, Scientific American. They don't do uh, sleazy stuff. They only do it if it's really good research by, by credible people, et cetera. And what they found, was so staggering, Josh, that the researchers that made this breakthrough discovery seriously talked among themselves about for the good of humanity, it might be best for us to bury this and never let anybody know the truth. Now, if you know anything about researchers, you know how crazy it is because getting a major published thing, that's their winning the Super Bowl, yeah. okay? That, they get a raise, they get a, an award, they get a medal around their neck, they get, you, you know, they would never consider that. So how come about this one study, they're saying, you know what? Maybe for the good of humanity, we should just bury this because what they found, Josh, is that our memories are so full of lies and errors, and this is a direct quote from that Scientific American article, which I've got right here, because they're so full of lies and errors, virtually every one of them, it would be more accurate to call them illusions than it would memories. But those illusions are the programming that form the beliefs on which we do everything. Wow. Um, let me tie one other thing, then I'll, I'll shut up for a second. Um, a lot, I mean, maybe you're thinking, okay, but that's just one article, that's just one re research thing. No, no. Uh, have you ever heard of Nas National Geographic? Yeah. All right. National Geographic, a couple of years ago, came out with a special edition and it was called the Owner's Manual for the Brain. You can still find this online and pay to have the old issue sent to you. The premier study for this special edition was this. It was a research study where the, the scientists and researchers discovered that approximately one second before you make a significant decision in your life. Now, that didn't, mean, that didn't have to be this career or that career. It doesn't have to be that significant. Just, just maybe, you know, I want a turkey or a salad for lunch. Uh, I mean, that, that's significant enough. But approximately one second before making any significant decision, 
there is an electrical spike in your brain. Now, it took them years, but they followed back the electrical spike and found out where it was coming from and what it was. The electrical spike is your unconscious mind mandating what your decision will be. Wow. And, 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 and that's what those scientific American researchers were faced with. They, the reason they thought maybe we shouldn't release this is they thought if people read this research and see the way it really is, they may give up. They may be hopeless. They may feel, hey, I'm just a puppet on a string. Doesn't matter what I do anyway. It's all based on the memories passed down that have all these errors in them, like a computer virus. There's nothing I can do about it, okay? And, and they literally thought it could spawn a hopeless giving up movement all over the world. Well, that's how big a deal your memories are. They are your primary programming for everything you do. Hey, hey, think about it. You take away LeBron James's memories. He can't dribble a basketball as good as a 10 year old. Yeah, no, that's okay? a good point. Uh, take away your memories. You don't love your wife anymore. You don't even know who she is. Okay. And uh, Antonio Damasio, PhD, MD, head of the neuro department at University of California, uh, USC, who's being mentioned for Nobel Prize these days, says imageless thought, in other words, thought that has no connection to your memories, is impossible. Hmm. Thinking and acting are always imagistic based on your memory. So this is what this is the nut, Josh, that Freud started trying to crack a hundred years ago. Only talking about your mother for three years does not do it. And yeah. and and this has been the holy grail of psychology and self-help ever since then, as people have tried to figure out how can we go into these memories that are causing us problems and causing us to behave the wrong way and putting us into stress when we shouldn't be and change them so that we can live a life of meaning and purpose and happiness and health. Wow. I mean, it's so powerful. And I'm thinking about, I mean, there are people out there struggling with anxiety, people with depression, people who have been told their whole life, they don't, you know, they're, they're never going to, uh, be significant and and how damaging these things are. But I'm also thinking about people out there, you know, Chelsea and I um, like to, uh, we work with, you know, several ministries and charities and organizations of like women who have been through sex trafficking or abuse or those types of things. I mean, think about some of the memories there that people need to overcome. I just, I, I love this because this is such a need. I look at what our medical and psychological, like, like, our, our medical system is doing today, especially in the realm of psychology and the way they're looking at treating things. And it, it's just as bad or it's just as bad as our medical system that's saying, I'm going to give you essentially a poison to help fix your problem, a chemical to fix your problem. Some of the things in the world of psychology is just as bad in terms of the advice they're giving you is actually toxic. Uh, I'll, I'll let you talk about that for a minute, but I, um, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm encouraged to know, and I want to let everybody know, um, a lot of the solutions that well, we are going to touch on a few solutions here. I'm going to have Alex uh, touch on those next right now. But if you want to find out how to heal your memories, how to have a memory transplant, as we're talking about, uh, go to amazon.com, go to your local bookstore, go to Barnes and Noble and check, check out Dr. Alex's new book. It's called The Memory Code. And um, I'm not always one to promote things on the show, but I do promote things that I believe strongly in. So the memory code, and and because I loved your book, The Healing Code, so much. I mean, that was such an amazing book. But I want to encourage you guys, check that out. But Alex, I'd love to hear you comment on what I just mentioned. And also, let's jump into, well, what are a few things people can do today? I know the book will get into more detail. But what are a few things people can do to start start working on healing these memories? Yeah, yeah, and 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 uh, to address what you said a second ago about the psychology profession, there's there's a reason, folks, that psychology, self help, 
social work, psychiatry, traditionally are the highest suicide rate professions in the world. It's because you get into it honestly wanting to help people and then realizing it just hardly ever happens. Wow. Okay. Um, but so anyway, um, for 30 years, uh, I've been trying to crack this, Josh. Is there a way to re-engineer memories? Is there a way to get into these memories like the one of my father hitting me? And, and like that lady I told you about whose parents brought her up, that she had to be a good girl, which basically meant perfect, which when she couldn't live up to, she felt like a bad girl. And, and, and we all have this stuff. I mean, this is not just if you've had abuse and trauma. We all have these things, okay? And, and all of us in psychology have known for decades it's about the memories. But the problem is, According to Dr. Lipton, the ones that are causing the problems most of the time are in your unconscious mind, not your conscious mind. And they can be inherited from hundreds of years back. Well, the definition of the unconscious is you don't know what it is. Mm. So how do you heal something that you don't even know you have it? And if you did, your unconscious is protecting it from being healed because it serves as an early warning defense system against something similar happening, kind of like your immune system for the physical stuff, okay? And uh, I want to tell you just one of the nutty things I tried. I remember being in my last year of my PhD program in psychology, and we were sitting in the hall waiting for our class to start, several of us who were seniors, and we had been talking about this kind of stuff for two years, and okay, there's got to be a way to do this. And, and so one of the things we tried, this is probably the craziest, is okay, the negative memory is acting kind of like a trauma, even if it's not a major trauma. So what if we gave the person sort of a positive trauma? Would it offset the negative trauma? And so the person, we were, we had a person who was telling us, okay, here's my issue that's bothering me and I can't. I can't change it, no matter how hard I try. So all of us stood up, and we started shouting in her ears as loud as we could, the positive, you're over this. This is never going to be a problem again. This is, you know, and, and thinking, okay, maybe we'll induce a positive to offset. The, of course, it didn't work. All yeah. right. There were four keys. Uh, the the, the mem memory engineering is what I call it, and it's what Scientific American called it. In fact, in a, in a recent article, they said the era of memory engineering has arrived. And according to my publisher, this is the first process ever published on memory engineering. It's a six-step, 10-minute process. And there were four keys that made it work. And I've never seen these keys anywhere else, Josh. Number one, you have to have a friendly, harmonious, mutually beneficial relationship with your unconscious. You have to. The reason your unconscious is a million times more powerful than your conscious intention. So you'll lose every time Unless, the uncon unless your unconscious cooperates with you in changing this memory from being full of lies and errors and fear and anger and unforgiveness and low self-worth to love, joy, peace, all right? You've got to have that relationship. That's number one, and the book tells you exactly how to do that. Um, number two, you have a miracle mechanism in you called psychological adaptation, okay? Here's how powerful psychological adaptation is. They did a study on it where they took brand new paraplegics and brand new lottery winners. People who had just become multimillionaires overnight and people who had just been in a horrible accident and now they're paralyzed from the neck down for the rest of their lives. They gave both groups all sorts of tests. Uh, happiness with life, looking forward to the future, blood pressure, pulse rate, heart rate variability, stress, um, 
all kinds of stuff. And as you would imagine, the lottery winners were through the roof. The paraplegics were under the floor. Okay, six months later, they give them all the same test and there is no difference in the two groups. Mm. The paraplegics are just as optimistic about the future, just as happy with their current life as the lottery winners. And, and you think that is impossible. That is psychological adaptation. It is a miracle mechanism God put in us that makes us okay within six months or less in any situation. Oh gosh, it's gold. All right. The problem is for most of us, as scientific American said, we have so many lies and errors and so much negative energy in us. It's more than psychological adaptation can overcome. So the second key is you have to shift your internal unconscious subconscious energy a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more to the positive until it gets to the place that psychological adaptation will grab it mm. and make you okay and wow. make you happy, make you have positive thoughts. You can't even stop them if you try. The third key is you have to create a new default memory that is true and positive so that every time anything related to this comes up this is the memory your mind goes to to decide what the attitude feelings thoughts and actions are that's number three and the last one is you have to get your unconscious mind to create the perfect default memory for this issue for the rest of your life. And when you do those four things, Josh, the, the closest thing I can, I can give you a metaphor for is it's, it's like stepping into a time machine, going back to some event that ruined your life and changing it, and then coming back to now. It's, it's, it's amazing, but you have to have all four of those keys for it to work and it took me 30 years to find them all test them and now publish the first process on how to do this uh at home in your pajamas by yourself wow i love it I want to encourage you guys check out alex's new book the memory code and we've been talking about things i just want to just share a few things that i've picked up on that are just so critical um, one, you know, what our current system is doing is not working. You know, if you've been trying to just say, I'm just trying to stay positive and, you know, and, and you've, uh, but you're coming up against the same things over and over again, it's time to sort of change how you combat the problem. As Alex talked about, a lot of times we're trying to, you know, unscrew a screw with a water bottle. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. And, and I can tell you again, I've, I've uh, working with thousands and thousands of patients when I ran my functional medicine clinic, you know, when I'm taking care of patients, Alex, and I've taken care of whether it be everything from again, autoimmune disease to hypothyroidism, um, there are a few factors. One, I can see nutrition make a big impact in someone's health, but the patients, especially who would see improvement, but then they would hit this sort of ceiling and all of a sudden it's like, why, why aren't they? Why aren't they getting any better from here? They're eating better. And this is, happens really frequently. It always comes back to an emotional spirit. It's always an emotional component. And as you're talking about, this makes so much sense. Memories. It's our memories. Some of them that we forgot we even had or that we have that are sabotaging us. And that's, that's the thing that I think that's so fascinating is that we are being sabotaged. We are, we are creating disease and illness in our body. We are sabotaging success in life, relationships in life. And a lot of times people have no idea what's at the root cause of it. No idea why people are acting out in certain ways. It's, uh, I mean, this is, this is powerful stuff. Well, thanks, Josh. And, and, and if you get the book, uh, you'll get a free gift from Josh as uh, part of that for getting the book. That's that'll right. Be on our, uh, that'll be on our book page. And if you want to go to my website, 
There's a free test you can take called the X Factor, takes 60 seconds to take, that will tell you the area of your life that is holding you back the most and how to fix it. So well, well, um, what's that? I, I love that idea. I love to, I mean, Chelsea loves us even more than me. Chelsea, it seems like she's always having me take a quiz. Like we love Enneagram and personality, but we also love this sort of stuff. So what's the website for where we can take the quiz again? Yeah, the website is dralexanderloyd.com. Lloyd is with one L and right on the front page, you'll see a little flashing thing that says, take the X factor. It's completely free, takes 60 seconds, and then you'll get uh, lots and lots of interpretation on here's your strength, here's your weakness, here's how to magnify your strength, here's how to heal your weakness. I love it. It's fantastic. I want to say thanks so much, Alex, for coming on. I want to encourage you guys again. Listen, we talk a lot about diet, nutrition, fitness, natural treatments on the show. This is one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful natural treatment on the planet to overcome a range of problems that affect both our health, but also our lives in every case. And maybe this isn't just for you. Maybe you have a child or a family member who you know, they've had an experience, they have a memory, they have a character flaw that is sabotaging them throughout their entire life. If that's them, hey, share this podcast with them, recommend Dr. Alex's book, recommend they take the quiz. You know, Alex, one of the things I always want to do is I want to bless other people. I want to add value to other people's lives. And one of the greatest things you can do to add value is by helping people transform their life by getting them good education material. So thanks everybody who's on mission with us to help people in body, but also in mind and in spirit. I want to thank my buddy, my good friend, Dr. Alex Lloyd for being here with us today. And uh, Dr. Alex, hey, thanks so much, man. I'll, uh, I'll see you soon. Hey, Josh, one time my back was out and you met me in a parking lot <laughs> to fix right. my back. You're the man. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. I love you, Josh. That's right. I love you too. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, everybody. This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed in this podcast are not medical advice and have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. In some cases, individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein.